The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Friday, the 25th of August. Gosh, August has just flown by. We say that because the weather in the Boston area this uh, August has been very cool and a lot of rain. Raining today, seriously, from last night. All right, so the Dow is up 112 at 34,212. Um, this is going, uh, let me go through this step by step. It reg regardless of what Fed Chairman does, the markets are telling us that there is, you know, I talk about bifurcation, meaning some sectors are really moving well and others are not. Um, and then I say so maybe it's try, but is it quite that with even within sectors, even within the semiconductors, where Nvidia was the absolute star all week until that reversal uh, early yesterday morning. Um, look, you can go through advanced micro devices. Uh, it's not a great looking chart. You can go through, uh, Marvell came out with earnings. I haven't even checked them. What, they, what happened to them? Uh, down three, down almost four. Uh, this is the story that we're looking at. I don't care what the Fed says. There are certain aspects to, to the charts that are indicating that there's a consolidation going on. I'm using the 914 as a really wonderful key this is the night I had my webinar on it. It's still time if you, I mean, it, it's a webinar. It's a teaching webinar. It's not, it was not just for a one-day thing to say this is where we are. It was looking out at different areas. Look, when that green nine-period moving average, the Dow is up 83 right now, 34,182. I talked about this in terms of double tops. Is this the one? Yeah. And, um, and then we said there's a chance when that, green line, the nine period moving average goes under the 14 period moving average, like it did back in May, you're going to get a couple of weeks of downside activity. So with that said, let's go to the actual chart. Here it is. So here's the Dow. Dollar INDU. There it is. Here's the Dow. It makes a high of 35,679 for disclosure purposes. I should say August 1st, we went short. The Dow still short the Dow, taking just a tad off, but basically short the Dow. And um, there is a left side, right side price time match. And I discussed this in my webinar. It was a teaching webinar. I discussed this arch formation, how you can get symmetry between the number of bars to the upside to the number of bars to the downside. I have no idea if it's going to happen, but it did once. So it might repeat twice. 33,610 was the low back in late June. And I suspect that that's kind of that getting close to that area is where we're going to see. Have we right now we had the digestive phase? What's happening? Has the weekly chart today at five or uh, four o'clock when the Dow weekly chart closes? I'll be able to assess whether or not there's a sell signal in the weekly chart. So far, the MACD has turned down, but it's still actually it's at zero zero, so it hasn't crossed yet. Have to wait for the close today. There is the M-shaped pattern in the on-balance volume. The stochastic was fabulous at the uh, 90 area, 90%. Now it's at 76%. The only thing that gave me a signal that says it could be a sharp reversal in this particular instance in the weekly is this little double top. But the on-balance volume gave a perfect turnaround on the first. So these these technical indicators are saying to me, these tools are saying, don't be impatient, wait to see what happens. If we close sharply for this week under the 14 period moving average in the weekly, <clears throat> and then on Friday a week, uh, Friday a week, I believe that's the uh, Friday a week is what date is that? Uh, where's my August calendar? Friday a week is the 25th, that's 31st. Oh, that'll be the first. No, come on. Is that really? Oh, we've run out of August. 25, yeah, 31st is Thursday. So let's let's say it's Friday in any case. It doesn't matter what the date is. The bar says it'll be the weekly bar. If the bar closes under sharply under that 14-period moving average, I have to initiate a sell signal 
in the month in the weekly chart. Just as simple as that. But it's a much better looking chart than the S and P because look, the S and P at this particular point, <clears throat> sell mode in the uh, in the daily chart, it wasn't an exact to the high of 4507, uh, back around about the 27th, 8th or so of uh, July. Uh, with the, the price time match, I chose a different candle, but I'll be making changes to that uh, later today. We'll see what happens here to move it. Sometimes there's a sliding vertical line, that plumb line in the middle. All right. And even here, the day is not young. Fed, Fed, Fed chairman has to speak. What I want to go through is where we are and what we're looking at. And the weekly chart on the S&P hasn't even given a single signal yet, other than to say, watch out because it is turning down but that nine is still very strong and the monthly chart is still very good look at the qqq a slightly different chart pattern uh, in the daily chart because it had a much bigger spike to the upside based on nvidia's uh, action on tuesday tuesday wednesday uh, wednesday and then thursday it turned around sharply but um, it also is in a sell mode in the daily, but not in the weekly. Weekly is still looking pretty good. Monthly is looking very good. <clears throat> IWM, Russell 2000. We're looking at the IWM, also a very sharp turnaround. It's under the 200. The cluster formation at the 200 period moving average just tells you that until it breaks away sharply on the upside and goes to it's at 183.42, until it starts trading in the 187s, this is just kind of stuck. Now, let's go to gold because, oh, no, no, I want to go to the SMHs. That's because that's my clue. The SMHs right now um, are at 40, up 50 cents at 149.34. That was a spectacular move to the upside. I just needed to check. I, th I thought I'd done it, but I guess I was busy with other things. Was that, let me just look at that. The high on the, high on the 22nd was 153.24. The following day was 153.22. So that means we went to a peak A right there, a gray A because the technicals were still very weak. And then we went to a gray B right there uh, yesterday. And that just says to me, and now we've pulled back with the pink nine period moving average still negative under the 40 in the daily chart. MACD is trying to cross positive. It's still negative. Stochastic's okay at 54. It's actually quite weak. The unbalanced volume is very weak. So we're going to have to monitor this very closely. And that's really a clue for me because if the SMH is at any point in September start to trade above 160, that the high all-time high was 161.17, or for clarification, uh, we, we did go short. Uh, two days later at 159.07, and we are still short that position. We've taken all our gains in the three times short SOXS. I was about to go back in yesterday, and then I thought, geez, a little sooner. We just had a lot of trades. It was silly because you got to do what you got to do, and I didn't take that opportunity. So, um, but there's plenty of time. If this is going to be going down for a period of time, in other words, a, in other words, a couple of weeks in the semiconductor index, it'll impact the general market. But it's I have to look this closely because if the if the semiconductors start to strengthen, that will help the market. I'll be back in a moment. Bells of Chapter Tiger Conditions Hour. Bells of 146. As a piece of 2016 right? If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so the vicissitudes of the market are shown right here. Look at this. Uh, this is the one minute chart. It was just meandering along, it popped up and then it failed. And then it had a big spike. But on days like this, this is the one time in the Chapman Wave methodology where the one-minute chart can have aberrations. In other words, this peak A can turn into a, a peak A minus, a single leg A to the upside. There's actually a B right there, so I should put that incorrectly. That's A and a B. It could fail, and I, I think that the market is... You know, this is the kind of day where you just want to step aside, say to subscribers, we're just we'll monitor our, our long positions with stops or whatever it is, short positions change, whatever it needs to be changed, and just take a breather. Let the market play out. There's just no reason to to get excited and say, this is it now, and I have to go through things step by step. So let me come back to the, what we're looking at here. It is a leg D in the 10-minute um, chart. And the 200 period moving average of 44, now it's 44.11, is kind of key. We're at 44, is it 44.10, sorry. We're at 44.08 in the E-mini. Ah, the day's young. So, and I'm not even going to talk about the chapter we've read, inverted Roman candle in the daily. Let's just get on with what's really important because look at this. We spoke about the gold. I'm a little behind now, I believe. I think I'm about 10 minutes behind in this contract. Now it's only down $1.07. Uh, I'm going to be watching this closely. Why? Because the dollar, not because of the Fed, but because of its action, said to me that the technicals are still really strong, but purely on a on a candlestick chart basis, purely on the resistance levels that I've typed in here over and over and over, that the high that was made on the dollar index at five th on the 31st of March, uh, May, sorry, May at 104.70, this whole area between that and the previous high of 104.27, uh, I think it is, uh, today's high is 104.31. We're right in the middle of that. But look, the MACD is good. Stochastic's flat at 86%. The red, you see this little gray line? The red to strength is working beautifully. UUP, which we are still long from 2018, has the potential for a doji-type candle. Had a fabulous move to the upside. The walking, the nine-period moving average, not even testing since the, since the little rebound back on the 26th of July. It hasn't touched the black line, the 14-period exponential moving average. I would not get caught up. 
The MACD is good. The stochastic is flat at 90%. Flat at 90%. Every textbook says it's overbought when it's over 80%. And I say, are you kidding? That's where you want it to be. Look, the longer that it stays up above 80%, the longer the price holds up. As soon as it gets back to 80%, look what you get. Fabulous action. So this could be an Eiffel Tower, single leg up A, single leg down, and then actually made a B, but like a single leg spike to the upside on news, and then it gives back a whole chunk of it. Be careful. That's what I'm saying. Um, there we go. So the UUP is acting really well. Uh, it had a breakout in the Chapman Way falling axe formation. I said, yeah, it could go a little higher. I like to do the step by step. It's already almost done the first. I, I, mean, I usually take these out because it, it looks so weird. But anyway, it's a technique that I use. Look, here we go. Make it make it thick. Make it, uh, bl uh, make it blue. And then I'll repeat it again. And remember, I don't go to the exact level. It has to work its way. So it's a work in progress. Uh, I don't like to over-anticipate. I like to just anticipate. So this will be light green right here. And look what happens. From this trough right here, I would do a parallel. This is called a Chapman Wave Parallel one-to-one -one extension. And I must go in the same angle, same number of bars to a match. And that goes from there. And we haven't got there yet. Uh, 2913 on the UUP would do it. But isn't this a nice man? This is a Chapman Wave falling exclamation. If this succeeds... And, and we start to trade nicely above this trend line right here, the Chapman Way falling axe formation. Oh, I have to explain it, huh? Okay. Chapman Way falling axe, uh, explain now if I can just find it. Let's do that quickly. Uh, actually, there's no rush. Why am I saying quickly? There's no need for any quickly here. We've got time. It's this pattern where the price goes up to a D uh, or an E or an F, and then it starts to make lower lows and lower Lower highs are much lower lows, like a, an expanding cone formation. And then what happens is suddenly finds a base and bam, it goes to the upside, tests that downtrend line and breaks it. And that's where you can get the falling axe goes to a cup formation with a chance of retesting the previous high. All right, so what did we do? We went here, falling. Oh, I just moved it, did I? Didn't mean to do that, sorry. Get back there. None of this is automated. I have to do everything by hand. So look at this. Uh, everything's done here, and the price is way above the pink, uh, the green nine period moving average, and the nine's way above the 14. Um, and the MACD is good. And the stochastic uh, right there is flat at 90%. On balance volume is getting a little toppy. You were a little toppy, and now there's a bit of a divergence. But this gray line here, because there is volume, is very good. So it's going to have to be a slide in the UUP above to, uh, below 28. It's at 28.99. It has to really start to trade below 28.48 for that green line to actually get even close to the black line to become negative. So, so far, I like what I'm seeing there. Let's do exactly the same thing because a lot of people are talking about gold. Um, gold now is down six. <clears throat> And one of the things, one of the reasons why we didn't enter into the gold, even though I liked a lot of the things, I like silver a lot more, is that this is a work in progress. When you make a dreaded H like this in the power, oh, dreaded H, I have to talk about it, so let's just get to the dreaded H. The dreaded H is this. I always look at basically three patterns that go straight up, straight down, cup formation or arch formation. When it's pink, red like this, and you come straight down, and then you make a there's a rally that goes to peak A or a B minus, and it fails and takes out the left side low, it can go a lot lower. Look, there's one, peak A minus fails. There's another one, peak A minus is gold. There's another one, and it fails, and it fails. And now you've got a peak A. It hasn't failed anything, but this is the pink nine period moving average is really not even close to turning positive. And that just says to me it needs a little bit of time. It can make another H, but this is a bigger one. When it starts to make the bigger ones, that's really important because that's telling you whether or not there's enough talk that goes to momentum. Talk is one thing. Talk a good line is one thing, but momentum is another. And this is just talk right here. This is where you slap it into first gear. And those people who know about gears, 
um, slap it into first gear instead of automatic or low gear. And uh, then you have to hand it when it reaches a certain speed. You want to hand it over to the momentum of the MACD. Well, the momentum of the MACD, look what happened here when the torque failed in the stochastic at uh, back in uh, July at that peak E. And then it just started to accelerate down. It handed it over to the tor the momentum of the MACD. So you haven't even got the torque yet of the stochastic. So I'm just saying uh, torque is cheap. Silver's different. Silver's already followed through. And you've got the nine period crossing positive. You've got the MACD much better. The stochastic's already over 80% and 83%. So any pullback for subscribers, I will probably be looking to... to, to Get a position in some way in the stock with the SLV. I like it very much. Now, how can you like one and not the other? Because this is that bifurcation that we're talking about. There's a different personality in silver to gold. Dow's only up 44, SLV's up 10. Let's look at the chart as we go out to the break. Was that an Eiffel Tower? Hey, yep, Eiffel Tower. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So there's a pattern that I was trying to explain, but I couldn't do because I was doing my show at the same time. As that popped up, I see, is this going to be a, a single leg A to the upside? But then I noticed that there was a peak A here and then went to B. But it has the characteristic after an economic news report at 8.30. This is not, this is, a, this is because of Jackson Hole um, and the Fed speak. Um, 
can we have a pop up? So look at this. These are the techniques in my webinar. So and there's still still there's plenty of time. My webinar that I did on Wednesday night discussed all these different patterns. Look at the symmetry. Count the bars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to the upside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to the downside, and it hits that low of uh, 43, right there, 43.9250. That was at 10.09. It hits it exactly right there. So these are techniques that I discuss. It's uh, uh, the three things that this is my own technique. I call it the Eiffel Tower, A pattern failure. We just say a Eiffel Tower. We, most of us now know exactly what I'm talking about. When I say Eiffel Tower, it means straight up and straight down. And it looks like the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower, a little bit, maybe more pyramid shaped than Eiffel Tower. But look, it went to a peak D, and the chapter made methodology peak D is in the 10-minute in the chart. Uh, is that, That's where other things can happen. The objective is to get you from a, a buy signal to a buy mode, meaning it should go to at least a D. Well, it went to the D and then it failed. So this is, a, I had said just, uh, in the den this morning uh, to a question, I said, we've already... We've had the first part of the morning. Actually, it's usually broken up into about five segments. But we've had the first part. The next part comes at 10.20. Where are we now? We're at 10.32. So 10.20 right here. You saw that was that was the top just before about 10.18. And whoops, we come down. Then I said, then there's, there's going to be an assessment of what Powell said. And then, um, and that so that second part is at 10.20. And then round about... Uh, maybe 12 to 1 o'clock, we get a, another part of the session, and then we get the final hour. And this final hour, those weekly charts, it's imperative that you monitor them very, very closely because how we close is going to tell me whether we have a chance of getting sell signals in the fabulous weekly charts of all these indices. All right, with that said, let's go back to our story. And I wanted to show you something that I think is it's kind of important at this particular stage. So I had a question about the TBT. Um, it's been a great, a great trade for me. Um, what do you think now? So this has made a little doji candle peak F in the Chapman wave. There is a left side, right side price time match, which takes you to about another couple of weeks into September. That says the 39, well, first of all, it has to even get, before it can go to 39.22, the high of last October, and October is where we actually went long, many positions, the Dow in particular, we still, still have that position uh, in the diamonds. So look at this, in the week of the 25th of November, at 32.94, 32.94, that's the next lower high. We haven't reached that yet. That's 30, uh, when I say it was 37. 92, 3.792 in the yields, right? Ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond ETF. Um, so that means this is still in a buy mode in the weekly chart. The daily says, mm, watch it closely. I'll do the same thing with the, the inverse, the T, TLT. But in the monthly chart, it's had a fabulous run. But this is only a new gray leg A, that previous peak D. Saw the nine period moving average hold fabulously all the way through this digestive phase in 2023. And therefore, I can't put a down arrow. I have to wait. And normally, this kind of action says, have patience, because either you're going to make a high that will see a candle, I mean, a, an arrow that goes down, meaning yields are now on their way down, or you fail right here in this dreaded H pattern. This is actually gray leg B right now. There's A, yes, B. Gray because it's the, bank, the stochastic is still very weak. MACD is good, but I need to have a full complement of technical indicators confirming there's a, buy, a new buy mode. So this is a, a, a bounce, and it's going to be more than a bounce if it, it garners strength. If it goes above 36, was that 44? Was that the high? Let me just check what the high was in the TBT. 30, no, that's wrong. There it is. 36.54. 36.54. If there are two closes above 36.44 next week, that would say to me, yields, let's go to the 10-year, T and X dot X, there we are. 
That means a tenure, which also went to a peak after there's an alternate count because the technicals are still, uh, the nine's still very strong. So I'm going to call this F slash B, meaning I don't have confirmation yet that it is an F, and you've got to be really careful because it's about to take a dive. And that just says yields are still going higher. But 43.33 was the high back in 2022, 4.333 at peak D. Now we're looking at different prices. We've already gone to the 43. Uh, what did I say? Uh, 40, did I give, actually give you a price? No, 43.62. So we've gone above that. Now, so many charts have made these double tops and double bottoms, and then they reversed very sharply. Is this the case that we're about to reverse very sharply in the 10-year yield? Well, the question for me is a non-question because I'm just going to let the nine-period moving average play out. Look at this. Um, here we go. Look, T TNX, TNX.X. Look, it went negative just briefly since that turn up back in May. And only for a couple of for about a week or so, it was negative, and now it's back to green. I can't fight that. Look at the um, TBT. It's getting closer and closer to pulling back, but pulling back is not going negative. It's having a little digestive phase in the nine period moving average. The black 14 period moving average is actually rising a tad. I don't want to fight that. Look at the TLT. The TLT is trying to rally. But that pink nine period moving average isn't even getting close. So all I'm saying is let the market, don't get carried away with the Fed, blah, blah, blah. I don't, there have been one, maybe two times in decades that I can actually recall where a Fed, a major Fed announcement coincided exactly with a low or a high. Once the trend is in, in place, it just kind of stays that way until it wears out and it changes its trend no matter what the Fed says. Done. Fed is finished. Now let's go on with a whole bunch of questions I got. Could I look at Apple? So Apple had made a, it's. – I'm waiting for Friday's close at 4 o'clock. Apple has got in a sell mode in the day, daily. It's very close. I've already put that in, the down arrow, because for three weeks it closed under the 14-period moving average. I just need to know with the sell signal in the weekly chart, first one I've had in ages, it's going to go to a sell mode. I think it will. Thinking is not the actual act. So I'm waiting for Friday's close and probably Monday's open. But my thinking is that Apple's in a digestive phase. Oh, it doesn't mean to say it's going to crack. It just says it needs a lot of time. Amazon? Amazon's a little different, but it's in the process of digesting big gains. I'll be back. Now it's only up to SMPs up 56 cents. Rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So I had a question, yes. The 10-minute chart went, uh, a couple of bars ago, went negative, went pink of the E-mini and it's that way and the uh pink one minute chart i'm showing right here went pink right there at about 4 44.05 and here we are at 4385 and it's still pink so uh, this is a great great way of looking at trends uh, meantime and i discussed that in my webinar that you can go to you become a subscriber you get my newsletter and uh, you get all the various webinars i've got on the page really is a great learning experience now What's interesting is for two positions we had this week that we we had great gains on small positions and we've tried to get in and I wanted to get in on these two particular kind of AI related stocks um, or robotics. But we went in, I had a pretty tight stop on one, and not as quite as tight a stop as I wished, but it got stopped out, and that it was acting lousy, then it acted quite nicely. But for me, it's a real big test to say, once the tide has turned, do you go to long positions? And unless the long positions are in areas that are completely differently related to the general stock market, because if you're looking at stocks, that's they kind of move together, uh, if you go to sectors, energy or whatever it is, like we have uranium stock, different different areas, they can go against that tide because they've got their own inner tide. Remember, we're looking at tides. In my webinar, I discussed you can have – in fact, I'll try to find it if I have a chance in the next break. I'll, I'll pull it up because I think it really describes each different tide. You can even get a rip tide. Today we're seeing rip tides up and down and up and down. So I don't know if I'm going to go for long, the long positions – now, because this one, the one that we got in uh, yesterday, acted, the day we got in and it had a great gain. And then by the end of the day, it gave a chunk up, but we were still up. And now it's down and we got taken out. And it just said to me, that's an area that I'm not going to touch. But it's also telling me that the NVIDIA was much more than a Fed climax. That was a climax of, look, here's Amazon. Amazon's filling in this huge gap. I mean, that's a gap that goes from the 120s and hits the 140s, and now we're at 131. The weekly chart still looks fabulous, but that daily chart is saying, I, I'm kind of struggling here. And if you look at um, Microsoft in the same category, Microsoft, the, the, the daily chart is in a sell mode. It had a good rally yesterday, gave it back, acting quite weak today. The monthly chart is making lower lows and lower highs, except for this week, where it's made a slightly higher high, and we don't know where the close is going to be. All I can say is there's a digestive phase going on. And if you're looking at the tide, the tide of the dailies, almost all of these are really the seven major. Well, actually, now I should go to Google because that was acting much better. Googie, 
Uh, Google, look at that weekly chart. Leg D, it's just pulling back from that. My weekly, daily chart went to peak A. This is an F slash C. I have to put the alternate count in. I don't like to do that at times because it says, well, wait a minute. F says, whoa, be careful. C says, hey, buy the dips. No, the point is that the way I'm counting it says we're at a peak F. The technicals are still okay. They're not great. They're okay. But I have to consider that this is a continuation pattern from that peak D at 129.53 back in June um, because that weekly chart is still showing such a strong nine period over the 14th that this could just be a continuation pattern. My eye says, are you kidding? Everything about this says that uh, Google should at least pull back and fill some of the gap in the 124 area. So that's the way I'm looking at this. Is this is an um, alternate count. So it's still holding pretty well. What was the other one that uh, I had a question about ready to go? Oh, if I could just do FXI. FXI is this China. Here's your Eiffel Tower or uh, inverted V-shaped pattern. Here's your bar symmetry. Look at this. You go from this low right here back in early July to the exact high, peak D right there. Then you go click, change the uh, oh, don't change the color, keep the color. Go click, put it in, and we went to it, held under it, went up, and now today we're going underneath it. So all I can say is there's a trend going on right now. I don't want to fight the trend. Uh, we are short the Dow. We're short the S&P. We've got some just to – we're actually now in the best cash position we've been in for quite a long time. I'm going to say – that there's a good chance that as we're looking at this phase right now, cash is a good place to be. I'm not saying cash is king because uh, if you're not in trades that are working, that's not good. But there are a few trades that are working in the sense, oh, Matt is the other one, um, that are working in the sense that they're just quietly making higher highs and higher lows. There are so many stocks that have reversed down. Now the Dow's down 56. Um, there's your dreaded H unfolding now in Meta. Look at this beautiful up channel. Uh, you know, since I was, since I did hand charting with pencil and graph paper, engineering graph paper, and a ruler way back in the 1980s, right up until uh, the 87 crash. Uh, so, yeah, the 87 crash. And then sooner after that, yeah, I even did that for the 1990 Christmas, Christmas 89, Christmas holiday going to the first of the year, I think it was 1990, with the, with the Nike. But I don't know why trade station, I must call them, I didn't have a chance. I must call them and say, hey, where, where are the other indices? How do I, why, how can you have a service without the other, other, maybe there's a place to get it. I've been asking them so far, they haven't, the person, each person I speak to doesn't know anything about it. But they must have, maybe someone who's using trade station given me, I'd love to have it. Actually, I say I'd love to have it. I better not have it. Otherwise, I'll end up charting those things as well. We don't need to. The U.S. market is tough enough. You don't need to get yourself. So FXI, no, it's got a problem. Uh, Meta right now, got a problem. It's about to test and maybe break. See, you don't have to have a, an up channel drawn in like this. You don't need the – do I need the base line? No, I don't need this base line. I've got the 14-period moving average. It's way better. It's more informative. This is just a line. The chart doesn't know that about the line. The chart does know that it's made up of uh, a 14 period exponential moving average. So that says to me, if next week, uh, Meta, uh, Facebook, if Facebook actually starts to trade in the 253 area, so two, uh, 280, I'm sorry, I meant 263 area. I could even say 273. 272 to two, no, 272 to two. 69. If it touches that, even touches it just once next week, be really careful because now you've got your magnificent seven reversing upside down seven. All right. So, with that said, a question came in. Um, yeah, nice meta peak F. It's actually a peak G in the daily, peak F in the uh, day. Remember, I was uh, these, the, the notation is just to help you. It's very important on the way up in the Chapman Wave methodology. On the way down, I do notate as much as I can. It doesn't have the same 
It doesn't have the same meaning. It's important to give information, but it doesn't quite have the same meaning because I use the, uh, the peaks on the way up. On the way down, uh, what happens very often is that you get, old, um, you get the technicals that really give you the information that you need. All right, I'll be back to Dallas Down 39, SMB's Down 11. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yes, so let me just see if I can find this quickly. Oh, can't find it. Oh, man. Oh, first of all, let me just show you this chart. I show this, I do this in my web, my CD book, um, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology back in 2005. Identify the trend and then trade with the trend. It's tough to do. But does this look right? You see the arrows pointing down, the prices, does that look up? You see the prices going down, the arrows pointing, ah, ah. This is what you want to be doing. You want to be trading with the trend. So right now the tide has changed to down. I have to, and and now you can have quick trades. Absolutely, you can go counter trend. You know you're playing trying to counter trend. But now I'm saying to myself, I think it's proved itself that within the context of um, just so many factors that you can see what I'm trying to do here. Where did I have it? Oh man. I think it was right here at the beginning. I'll find it. But most importantly, 
patterns are consistent uh, amongst the time frames. No, oh, no, no, no. All right, I'm not going to be able to find it. Um, so even more important than anything else is that the tide for me has changed to down in the Dow. The tide has changed for me in the SMHs and the other indices are following. At the close today, I'll be able to gauge whether I've upgraded I've upgraded the um, weekly charts, and that's going to be really important. Why? Because in the weekly charts, what we do find is that uh, it takes a while. You saw how long it took for the Dow to cross negative in that uh, using that moving average. So all I'm saying is <coughs> check out my opening call, my daily newsletter if you get a chance. A lot of webinars as well. I did the webinar on Wednesday. That was an educational one. And I achieved almost everything I want to do. There's always never enough time. But have a great rest of the day and uh, great, great programming coming up. And Thomas got his webinar coming up next weekend.